Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a sum. This is the last problem of 2021, so I thought maybe we would use 2021 in this problem. Okay, awesome. So now we do have the quantity k squared plus 3k plus 1 multiplied by k factorial, and this sum is basically taken over k equals 1 through 2021. Great. So let's see how we can handle this. We have the expression inside the parentheses, k squared plus 3k plus 1. So one method here could be to think about, okay, what happens if I distribute this, right? So if I distribute this, I'm going to get something like this. I'll be getting k squared times k factorial and then 3 times k times k factorial plus k factorial. Now, if you separate these three quantities, uh, we could probably find something for this because you probably, I, I, I don't remember if you've done this problem before, we probably did. But anyways, um, k times k factorial can be actually summed pretty easily because you can write this as k plus 1 minus 1 times k factorial and then that becomes k plus 1 times k factorial minus k factorial and this is k plus 1 factorial minus k factorial. Therefore, that you're going to get a telescoping sum from here. But what about this one? Can I get something similar? Because that's k squared. So could I possibly write it as k times k times k factorial? But this is not going to become k plus 1. So uh, another thing that we have to worry about is the sum of the factorial, which is not fairly easy to do. Anyways, so we got to use a different approach, I think. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in a different way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on the quantity as a whole k squared plus 3k plus 1. Remember, I just talked about k times k factorial. So can I get something that kind of looks like that? Because this you were able to write as k plus 1 factorial minus k factorial, right? This is a really nice identity. So can I get the difference from here? And yes, I can. If you just write the k squared plus 3k plus 1 as k squared plus 3k plus 2 minus 1, and the reason we use k squared plus 3k plus 2 is because it's factorable into k plus 2 times k plus 1. So that's the first part. And we're going to go ahead and substitute that here and multiply it by k factorial. And then we are just going to sum it. So let's go ahead and do it. So if I replace my quantity, of course it's going to be 1 through 2021, I'm going to be getting k plus 1 times k plus 2 minus 1. So far it doesn't look very good, but it's going to get better. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this because that's a difference multiplied by k factorial and that's going to give me k plus 2 times k, oops, I wrote the k plus 2 twice. That's supposed to be k plus 1. That's k plus 2 times k plus 1 times k factorial minus, so since that's a minus sign, I can just go ahead and use the sigma again, separate those two sigmas. And the second part is just going to be 1 times k factorial, which is just k factorial. Great. Now, if you look at the first sum, that is k plus 2 times k plus 1 times k factorial, it is k plus 2 factorial, because these are consecutive terms, and it ends with factorial, therefore, pretty much we have the rest of it. Uh, and we get basically to, um, take advantage of the identity for factorials. So this becomes k plus 2 factorial. Great. And then, of course, from that, I'm going to be subtracting the sum for k factorial. And this is also going to be telescoping, not as telescoping as the other one, but still pretty telescoping. All right, great. Let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. Obviously, we're dealing with very large numbers here. And then at the end, I'm going to give you an estimate what the answer looks like. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and expand it. Um, if you expand the first one, you're going to start off with 3 factorial. Rem remember, you're going to replace k with 1, but that's 1 plus 2. So that's going to become 3 factorial. And then we're going to get 4 factorial, dot, dot, dot. It's going to end up with 2023 or 2023 factorial, but we only have 2021. So let's go ahead and uh, go through these. Let's write a couple more terms here. And then the last one is going to be 2023 factorial. And then from this, 
I'm supposed to subtract 1 factorial, 2 factorial, dot, 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 all the way up to 20, 21 factorial. Awesome. So, and um, I could probably uh, just take this, just move a little bit to the left maybe so that it's not, it's not cut off when I edit the video. Okay, great. So now we have the following uh, sums and the difference. So a lot of terms are going to cancel out. Notice that starting with 3 factorial, everything all the way through to 2021. And of course, this is also going to be canceling out. So that leaves us with four terms. That's pretty telescoping, right? We end up with 2022 factorial plus 2023 factorial minus 1 plus 2, which is obviously 3. And this can be simplified a little bit more. Uh, if you consider the fact that 2023 factorial contains 2022 factorial, so in other words, we can write this second term as 2023 times 2022 factorial. Now we can go ahead and factor this out. I mean, it's not a huge improvement, but still looks a little simpler. And we're going to get 1 plus 2023 inside the parentheses minus 3. And this basically can be written as 2000 not 2004, 2024, 2024 multiply by 2022 uh, factorial minus 3. And this is a very, very large number, approximately 3.19 times. And you, at this point, you can kind of guess how many digits this number is going to have. I'm going to write in scientific notation, approximate value, of course, 10 to the power 5,000. 811. Yes, this is a number with 5,812 digits. Wow. What a way to end the year 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow in the new year. I'll see you in a year with a new video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.